share some more things with you concerning the local church. And a lot of times I'm afraid people get confused when we talk about church. And uh, many times when you, you mention a certain church, somebody said, well, that's the church that has the big tall steeple in it. Or that's the church that has the chimes. Or that's the church that has the big fountain in front of it or whatever. And that's the way we think of churches as buildings. And in reality, the church is the people, uh, the people that are part of that church. And so every one of you uh, represent the Antioch Baptist Church. And so it's important for us to represent it in a way that bring honor and glory to the Lord. It's kind of interesting when you look at the people's perspectives at how they look at things. There was a preacher that had a young uh, daughter and uh, kind of reminds me of our situation. I've had the privilege of reading and telling uh, book stories or Bible stories or uh, night stories to our kids and to our grandkids right now. And uh, in this particular story, one minister came home every evening in time to tuck in his little girl and tell her a bedtime story. One night he told her such a thrilling story that she sat up in bed and looked at her father and asked, Daddy, is that a true story or are you just preaching? <laughs> so I don't know if that helps any and uh, again it's of how you look at it and growing up in the church and then the two minute warning uh, our preacher's sermon was lasting so long that at length a restless little girl looked up at her mother and whispered is it going to go into overtime <laughs> and the mother hissed back yes and if you don't sit still it'll be sudden death <laughs> okay. and, uh, it's all about perspective how we see church and how we see things happening in the church it reminds me of another story too the little girl that got sick in church and we've had that happen here several times and um, sometimes it's been our own kids that have gotten sick here and it's really bad when the preacher gets sick and he's right here you know? <laughs> uh, this little girl got sick and she was sitting in church and she suddenly just asked her dad she said dad I feel sick and uh, so when he said, she said it to her daddy, he whispered to her, he said, well, what's wrong? She said, I have to vomit. Oh man, that sounds pretty serious, don't it? And so her father told her to hurry to the restroom. In just a moment, she was back. She said, I didn't have to go too far, she explained. There's a little box by the door that says, for the sick. <laughs> and uh, the church has had a box for the sick and a box for the poor and a box for the missionaries and a box for whatever. So go get the picture. She didn't go to the restaurant. She just went back to the back. Okay. Anyhow, so how we look at church sometimes, I'm afraid we, we get some wrong perspectives of what the church really is. And uh, some of the things depend on how young we are when we start the church, um, different things that we learn. And then some of you growing up in church uh, have a different perspective too. And so as we look at last week, we talked to you about the founding of the church and the Lord Jesus Christ was the foundation and is the foundation of our church in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It tells us that he is the foundation and that that's the foundation that we build upon. And then he goes ahead and he compares people to basically to precious stones, uh, to uh, gems and so forth, even to wood, hay, and stubble uh, as they make up the church as we build upon the foundation, which is Jesus and so as we think in those terms, just before he started talking about the building and building the building, he talks about a husbandman. Now, when you think of a husbandman, you think of somebody that's married. But in this particular writing, it's referring to a farmer. And so simply, um, I've taken a little play on that, that stain, um, God has a garden. And when I say that the church, we can look at it as a garden, okay? And so some might say, are you calling me a fruit or a vegetable or, or whatever, or a nut, whatever, you know, grow in your farm. But simply in growing a healthy, fruit-bearing church, we need to try this plan, okay? First of all, you need to plant three rows of squash, okay? And I don't know if anybody can see a place to grow some squash around here, probably out in the yard. Charlie's probably not the best place to grow it. But what we need to do is we need to squash out gossip, Think about how many problems gossip can cause in a church. And as y'all were talking just a few moments ago, y'all were talking about gossip in the school, gossip online and other places, and yet how much gossip is right now destroying our country, hurting our country. So we need to plant some squash that squash gossip, okay? 
and then we need to squash criticism. I mean, you think about it, isn't it easy to criticize somebody that's doing something? Somebody that's trying to, if you please, to uh, get people to come to church. Somebody that's trying to uh, give to the church so maybe we can keep the buses going. And uh, somebody that's trying to help the missionaries on their needs and whatever. And it's so easy to criticize people and say, well, what are they doing that for? Don't they know that, you know, and maybe they have a particular agenda that they want to get into. So, again, uh, when we think about squash the criticism, get rid of it. Uh, don't allow it to get growing in our church, okay? And then squash the indifference. And by that, I mean, it's so easy for us to say, well, I believe, or this is my opinion. And when we start getting off into our opinions, and it's not based upon the Bible, then we're going to be in trouble. And so, again, God's garden needs to have the proper squash, okay? And then something else that God's garden needs. And, uh, again, we need to plant seven rows of peas, okay? Now, you've heard me say before, what's your peas and cues, okay? And uh, But seven rows of peas. Wouldn't you like to know what those peas are? And you know, there's various types of peas, you know, those are what they call snow peas and, and there's chickpeas and uh, anyhow, we're going down the list. But these peas are, ready? The pea of prayer. We need to pray. And we just did that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that great that we all got to participate in our prayer meeting, whether it was given some sort of prayer request uh, or it was praying verbally for someone else. Or, and many of us, uh, if you do like I do, I pray while others are praying. And uh, as they're praying, I try to pray with them. And then promptness. And I appreciate all the young people were here in plenty of time today. And so uh, the bus got out there, picked them up, and had them here about 10 minutes before church started. And that was really nice because I was the only one in here. And suddenly, well, I take it back because y'all just got in here. Both the trolleys had gotten here. And uh, all of a sudden, the, we heard a mob coming in. And that was exciting. <laughs> and the, lot of the, the, the mob was very much alive <laughs> as they came in. And it's amazing how the church suddenly just seemed to, woo, wow. Uh, but so promptness, and I appreciate those that are always prompt to the services. And and, uh, and it shows that you're really interested in what's happening, the fact that you are prompt. And then perseverance. And sometimes I know that my preacher, maybe it seemed to go a little bit too long, and it seemed like you had to persevere. And sometimes maybe somebody rubs you the wrong way in the church, and you have to deal with that and, and do the best you can. And sometimes maybe things just don't happen. Maybe your money just don't seem to be adding up right. Maybe, uh, you know, there's some sickness that you're dealing with or whatever. But we need to learn to persevere and continue to do what God wants us to do for his honor. And then the next P is the P of politeness. And I know as a young person, a lot of times we want to be heard. And uh, when I say that, we have a tendency to try to speak when somebody else is speaking. We have a tendency sometimes to run because, uh, and, and I've been guilty of this many a time, I'm driving down the road and I'm in a hurry and some old grandpa, excuse me, <clears throat> some, some person will get in front of me and they'll be driving so slow. And uh, anyhow, and I need to, to get around them but I can't because there's a double yellow line or whatever. And, uh, and my tendency is just hurry to get around them, okay? Well, sometimes it happens in church too. And some of our aisles in this church are not real wide. And so if you try to run, uh, you can you can hurt somebody. And that wouldn't be polite. I mean, uh, there's a crazy Christmas song as uh, Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Mm -hmm. And I hate for somebody to say, oh, man, somebody got ran over at the church by a little kid. <laughs> you know, whatever. Okay. But when I'm saying politeness, that's part of politeness, being polite to others in the church, again, uh, one of those seven P's we were talking about, dead preparedness. It's good to bring your Bible. It's good to bring a, a notepad and pens. I appreciate those that have done that, uh, that are making notes right now. Of course, I don't know, maybe they're making notes to pass to the boyfriend or the girlfriend. Hopefully, you're not doing anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. That's your color book. All right. Moving on. <laughs> but what am I saying? I'm saying that simply, we need to come prepared. And by come prepared, I mean, it's good for us to pray before we get here. And, and to pray for the pastor that he'll share something with us. And then, you ready? It might be good to prepare to say, I want to I want to get something to the church today. I want to get something to Jesus today. And maybe even mow a yard and say, I'm going to give this to Jesus. Wow. Would that be? I'm not talking about the grass clippings, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about whatever you might get paid for. But come prepared to the church. And then purity. That's something so important. And yet it seems like it's not important according to the world. 
But purity is keeping ourselves pure and clean so that we can be used of God. Keep ourselves pure and clean so that people would see that we're different than the rest of the world. The rest of the world will have you do all sorts of terrible, awful things. And then the last thing when they talk about the seven rolls of peas is the pea of patience. Uh, folks, we need to learn to be patient. And uh, patience comes through trials and tribulations and testings. And so the next time you have some sort of problem or difficulty, look at it as God trying to teach you something about patience. So there we have the seven rows of peas. And then what else could I come up with in the way of vegetables? The first one was squash. The, the second one was peas. And are you ready for our, our third one? Our third one is lettuce. Okay? And so lettuce, be unselfish and loyal. That means we need to be willing to give to the cause of Christ again. We need to be kind to each other. And, and sometimes, wouldn't it be nice to, just for somebody to come up in the church and say, hey, uh, I was just thinking about you the other day, and so here's a candy bar. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> or, or here's something I just wanted to give to you. I just thought it might be a blessing to give this to you. And being unselfish and then being loyal to each other. I, I mean, when you're out and about, uh, are, are you excited? Some of you have had this happen to me several times that uh, I'd be out maybe at the hospital, some other place, and immediately one of you would see me and you'd say, Mom, that's our pastor. That's the pastor from our church. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's kind of sad in one way that the parents wouldn't know I was your pastor, but I'm excited that you get excited that that's my pastor, that's my pastor. And uh, so that's good. And what I'm saying, I'm talking about being loyal. And I hope you're the same way. You say, well, that's Sean. He's my bus driver, you know, or, or that's Jerry. She's our Sunday school teacher or, or whatever that you get excited about seeing others in church or saying, oh, that's one of the kids I fought with. I mean, that's one of the kids I play with at church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we want to say be loyal to each other and let each other know that you enjoy being here. I saw a sign that I went, went running uh, today. And uh, when I first saw it, I looked at it and it says, I go to Grace. And I thought, well, that person is loyal to Grace. And they go to Grace. And so I thought, well, that's kind of neat. And maybe we ought to get some sign and say, I go to Antioch, you know, put those all over the place. But anyhow, and then put it on your, your notebooks and, and uh, maybe get a book cover so they go to Antioch, you know, and then you go to school. Uh, and of course, I know you'll fix it beyond school. But moving along here. But what I'm saying, being unselfish, let us be unselfish. And then let us be faithful to do you. And I think it's kind of interesting, Sean was telling me about some of the duties that you'll have as young people, that sometimes they'll have you uh, kind of keep an eye, and then you, you watch to see if anybody's uh, out of line, or maybe somebody's talking to somebody, or maybe somebody's holding hands or something, or, or you know, whatever, and, and then you report it. And he said he's been amazed that some of you have, that you can have your back turned, and it's like you got eyes in the back of your head. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, okay? And that's neat that y'all can see and know all the things that are happening in the church at one time. But let's be faithful to the duties that we have, whether it be a, a door monitor or be just somebody... Uh, helping or being friendly or whatever, but be faithful in our duty to the Lord's house. But let us also search the scriptures. Let us search the scriptures. And that's important for us to study God's word, not only here at church, but when we're at home, study God's word. So let us do that. Then let us not be weary and well doing. Let's continue to do good, no matter how tired we might get. And I know some of you are really tired, uh, my wife has been up since about 5 o'clock this morning, and she's been driving a lot of you to school, doing shuttle bus driving and everything. Then at the same time, she's trying to get some flights set up for us for Benoit too, and we were also trying to go to Texas for the funeral services and other things. And she's just been really, really busy. And then Janet called right in the middle of her trying to get a, a, a reservation in Benoit too. And uh, anyhow... Uh, just a lot of things going on. So she's just tired and run out. I know she don't look tired and run out, does she? And then she has to fix a meal for her husband and uh, whatever. But all these things, you know, going on. Uh, but what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is you can get tired even though you're doing good. But keep on doing good, okay? Don't just get cranky and just say, well, you old jerk, just do your own. I'm glad my wife doesn't say it. <laughs> okay, moving along. But let us be obedient in all things. So let's be obedient to our parents. Let's be obedient to uh, our uh, Bible and to our church and to our pastor, to those that are over us. Let's be obedient to them. 
And then let us be truthful. And again, it's so important to be truthful one with another. There's so much lying going on in this world. I mean, all you have to do is turn on the TV or whatever you turn on to, to get the news and you'll find, boy, they're lying left and right. It's just amazing, isn't it? And then this, let us be truthful. And then let us love one another. And, uh, and this kind of reminds me of another one. Uh, and y'all know what, uh, uh, what, uh, what uh, uh, honeymoon salad is? It's lettuce alone. <laughs> I'll show you what I thought about. Okay. <laughs> hey, you got a grin from Eric there. He's one of the younger ones here. So, but anyhow, well, what I'm going to translate. So, let us love one another. And, and let's face it, some of us are real easy to love. Isn't that right? Kurt, you're just so easy to love, you know? So, I'm like, oh, you know, but okay. <laughs> and some of you others, oh, okay. <laughs> but what I'm saying, okay, you're all easy to love, okay? But what I'm trying to say is we need to love those that aren't so easy to love too, okay? And then I got one more vegetable I just can't pass up for the night, okay? As we talk about God's garden. Uh, no garden is complete without, you ready? Turnips. Mm -hmm. Without turnips, okay? And so turn up for church. And a lot of you did that tonight. But what amazed me is how many of you said, well, pray for so-and-so because she wasn't able to make tonight. And pray that so-and-so will be able to make the church next service. Pray for me. And, and that's neat. But I'm so glad that you turned up for church tonight, okay? And that's something that we all need to do. We need to turn up for meetings in prayer and Bible study. We need to turn up every time, okay? Then we need to turn up with a smile, <laughs> Okay? Uh, wow, I see a couple of smiles coming through and some of you look up and crack your face. <laughs> okay, but turn up with a smile even when things are difficult. You ready for this? I bet right now we can change the whole spirit of this service by just saying, okay, people, how many of you have a complaint? How many of you have a gripe? How many of you have a grievance? And suddenly everybody starts thinking, yeah, and, and next thing you know, hand be going up after hand after hand and and suddenly our spirit would change, wouldn't it? And what I'm saying is that we need to learn to not, uh, you know, turn up with grievance, but go ahead and, and turn up with a smile on our face, even though things don't seem to be going right. Aren't you glad that it says in the Bible that Jesus, for the joy that was set forth, he endured the suffering of the cross because he knew we were going to get saved through all that suffering. Wow. So turn up with determination to do your best in God's service. And so when we come here, do what we can to be a blessing to others here in church. In 2 Peter 3.18, we read this Sunday morning, but after planning, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we may reap the riches and the blessings of being faithful to him. God wants to bless us. And so again, as we think of the function of the church, Remember all those things that we just pointed out, the importance of prayer? It says, therefore, um, was kept in a prison, Paul was, or Peter was, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And so the church prayed for him so that he'd be freed from prison. And of course, he was pretty free. But also we need to pray uh, in the church as we function together, we need to have praise. Our praise needs to bring glory to the Lord. So whenever we sing, we need to sing with a with a joy and excitement as we sing. And then as we do all these things, it's very, very important that we get involved in God's house and the functions that he has for every one of us. So again, I trust that you're helping in God's garden. I hope that you're not being a source of discouragement. I hope that you're not discouraged. And I hope as a result of what we shared with you tonight that you'll see just how important it is to do the work for God. And so right now we want to go to Lord in prayer. If you would, would you stand to your feet? Lord, thank you for this time we can come together and study your word. And Lord, I know our message has been somewhat light as we shared it with the folks. But we pray that you'll help them to see the importance of the church. Lord, help us to be involved in your work. And may people see that we enjoy coming to the church, that we enjoy being with your people, that we love being with you. Lord, help us that we might uh, do all these things that were mentioned tonight, that we'd be involved in, no matter how little it may seem, that we'd be involved in, in pointing others to you. 
Lord, help us that if there's anyone here that's not saved, that tonight they see their need of trusting you, that they pray a simple childlike prayer, meet with their heart and say, Dear God, please forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. May they pray that in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. God bless you. Y'all have a great day. Okay.